There is a large range of instruments available for the removal of supra and subgingival calculus, including ultrasonic devices, sickles, hoes, chisels, and curettes. Curettes are specifically designed to assist in the removal of subgingival calculus and to smooth the root surface, which is also known as root planning. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating the use of the universal curette. The major difference between the design of a scalar and a curette is in the shape of the blade. In the cross section, the blade of a scalar is triangular, whereas in the curette, it is semicircular. The rounded convex back of the curette allows it to be placed within the periodontal pocket with minimal laceration or discomfort to the patient. Most curettes are smaller and finer than other scaling instruments. At the ends of the rounded toe, features which improve tactical feedback and other minimize gouging of the root surface. There are basically two designs of the curettes. The universal curettes are designed so that it is possible to adapt the one instrument to all tooth surfaces by making use of both cutting edges on the blades. Both area-specific curettes, such as the Gracie curettes, are designed so that each blade adapts to a specific tooth surface or area. Only one cutting edge on each blade is used. Universal curettes are designed so that the working ends can be adapted to all tooth surfaces of all regions of the mouth with one double-ended instrument. The blade of the universal curette is honed at 90 degrees to the lower shank. All universal curette shanks are designed so that when the handle is parallel to the root surface of the instrument being used, the lower shank is automatically tilted towards the tooth to provide proper working angulation. Both cutting edges on the blades can be used by simply tilting the instrument one way or another. The two cutting edges on the blade are straight or parallel to each other. There is no curvature between the blade except for the curve from the shank to the toe. There are two types of universal curettes, Columbia 1314 and Barnhart 56. The Columbia 1314 and Barnhart 56 are both angled the same, though there are slight differences in the width of the blade and the lengths of the shanks. The Barnhart 5.6 has a slightly longer shank than the Columbia 13.14. This that I'm showing is the Columbia 13.14. I do not have a Barnhart 5.6 with me. Um, the characteristics of these instruments include the face of the blade to 90 degrees to the terminal shank with two cutting edges of the round toe. So if you look, this is the two cutting edges that are on the sides of the toe. That's the long shank. Um, so when you're using the instrument for stabilization, you're gonna place your finger in a fulcrum with a C-shaped modified pen grasp, and you're gonna lightly put pressure against the occlusal or the incisal surfaces only one or two teeth away from the tooth that you're scaling. The adaptation will be the toe to the toe third of the cutting edge that's going to be against a tooth and you're going to use the sequence of close insert and open so when you close you want to avoid um, any tissue laceration so the face of the blade is being closed tip towards a tooth such that the angle is zero to 40 degrees and when you insert you're going to insert with the instrument against closed against the tooth surface. The working end is moved apically into the sulcus or pocket to the junctional epithelium, which should be indicated by the blanching of the tissue on the patient. And then once you're in the sulcus, you're going to open, which is basically rolling the instrument. Um, and the angle of the face of the blade is open, tipped away from the tooth so that there's like a 60 to 80 degree um, working angle. And then when you activate, you're gonna use controlled overlapping short strokes with moderate to firm pressure against the tooth surface. Maintained as a working stroke made in a direction away from the soft tissue. The working ends remains beneath the gingival margin, at least in the lowest part of the toe is kept below the gingival margin with each stroke. So you would start at the distal line angle, you would insert, open, and then when you activate, you're gonna stay underneath into the sulcus and you're just gonna roll the instrument once you get into proximally between. And then going mesially, you would do the same thing. You insert, open, and then you activate. So you'd be following just this way. And then you wanna make sure you stand up on your fulcrum and you roll your instrument into the space. 
Um, the working angles that are used is 60 to 80 degrees, and the terminal shank is angled slightly towards the tooth, similar to how we use the H5 and the 204S. Um, for cementum, for on um, you would use a 60 to 70 degree angle on cementum for root debridement, and you would use a 70 to 80 on enamel for debridement. So one would be underneath the gum, and one would be more on the actual tooth surface of enamel. Um, strokes with pressure should be limited to areas where calculus is pre present. You'd use a minimum number of strokes needed to remove deposits. Um, there's two different sequences that we follow with instrumentation for the universal curette on anterior teeth. You're going to instrument away from, you're going to instrument from canine to canine, and you're going to go in the direction that the instrument is pointing. So if I were to be doing the sequence of the anterior teeth, you would start in the midline and you would just instrument, rolling your instrument also, and you would go straight across, making sure that the instrument is staying in the pocket. And you would do that straight from canine to canine. And then for the posterior teeth, it's a little bit different. We're gonna go, instead of canine to canine, you're gonna go from the most distal tooth back to more mesially. So you would start at the distal line angle with the working end pointing distally. So we'd always want like the V of the instrument pointing distally, so we'd be starting here. So I'm gonna show you this tooth. So you go insert, open, and then you activate and you follow around the distal line angle and then you're gonna come back out and you would be going mesially, same thing, insert, open, activate, and you would just follow it around until you get all the way into proximal. And then, um, okay, so then for the next part, we would just wanna make sure also, my tooth is falling out, <laughs> um, that when we do use the instrument, you want it to be more, you have to control the angle of the shank. So you want it to be more like when you insert open, the parallel, like you want the shank of the tooth of the instrument to be parallel to the root surface of the tooth always. So how this stands up vertically, you want the same thing towards the root surface. If the instrument is angled this way, it's improper. You never want to cross over the tooth. It goes for the same thing with um, the anterior teeth also. If you are too over, if you're more this way, it's not the proper working angle. And that's it.